You failed. You're fighting again. What's, There's 50 days to do something. Yeah. What's going on with Sona Motors? If you've been watching us for a while, then you probably heard us talking about Brilliant.org, and you've probably heard us mention what a great resource it is for students. But what if you don't care about all that fancy book learning? What about the real world? What about street smarts? Brilliant has courses for you, too. Everything from how refrigerators work to axe throwing. Solar power and fossil fuels and even solving crimes. Brilliant has a wide variety of courses with interactive lessons and quizzes to keep you engaged learning something practical. To support our channel and learn more about Brilliant.org, go to Brilliant.org slash now you know and sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. All right, well, we're with the co-founders and co-CEOs of Sono Motors. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Lauren Hahn and Jonah Christians. Uh, we haven't speaking, spoken with you in quite some time, um, and I hear there's something going on. I, you're fighting. You failed. You failed. You're fighting again. What's, there's 50 days to do something. Yeah. What's going on with Sono Motors? Well, there's a lot of things happening. Um, we, we launched a campaign called Save Zion, 3,500 Zion full paid or equivalent in 50 days. And we launched that just two weeks ago. And we are here to fight. We are here to fight for the Zion and to bring this car to, to the road. Yes. And first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, it's great to be here again uh, on your channel. Yes. And uh, well, it's crazy these days. Because what we see is we have achieved so much with the sign, right? It's, I don't know how much you have seen about our progress, but what, what have we achieved? Like we have serious validation vehicles now out, out on the street. So we're testing them as we're talking for crash tests, for uh, durability tests and so forth. And so we're so close to production, right? And yet we come to a point where we say we cannot do it alone. And that is the campaign we're talking about. So yeah, we're already in it. Uh, it's 50 days um, for three, 1,500 uh, full paid uh, reservations on the sign. With that, we can continue. But yeah, it's again on the community, on all of us to say like, is it continuing? Well, we fight for it. But but I mean, like what happened? I mean, we, I thought, I thought you know, you had lots of crowdfunding and, and you've, I thought we were building towards this. What, what led to- yeah, what went wrong? What went wrong that now we have to save uh, Scion? Well, it's, it's, it's all about money um, to, to say that it's that simple. Um, we have, you know, been successful in the past, have raised over 330 million uh, US dollars over the last couple of years, including an IPO at NASDAQ. But we always communicated that we need more money. And, um, you know, the market had turned down tremendously over the last six to 12 months. I mean, all stocks being down, um, you know, between, I don't know, 10 and 90 percent out there and you know the market has turned and in that recession we are in right now with interest rates rising with pandemic um, inflation we, we were facing a challenging headwind which which we are right now you know trying to overcome with the community and, and what's still special about this phase is that we we're not we're not talking about bankruptcy or something yes. uh it's actually like when when you talk about our bank account, it's like you know you look at it. Hey, you ha you got some plenty of money. It's like fifty five million at the beginning uh, of this campaign. Yes, at right. the be so so we can still say we we operative uh, liquid, right? We can still you know um, pay our whatever it is rent, salaries, and so forth. But for the higher investments that are needed right now in the phase for the project sign. We cannot afford all tools um, what, that we need for the production setup. And that is the crucial phase we're in right now, where it's actually not, you know, it's not about Zona Motors surviving. Because if we do not continue with the project sign, we will continue with our solar integration technology and put that in other vehicles. And we already have a steady business there. We, we already got revenues uh, this year. So you, you see that flourishing. And that, that is not the matter we are talking about. It's especially the project sign. Do we, are we continuing with the project sign? Yes or no? That is the campaign, what it, what it is all about. And yes, we come here at the point because of the money, because of, you know, the, the market situations. And it's always been like for us, it, you know, we are not the millionaires. Uh, we are not funded by the government. You know, it, we, right. it was, this was always grassrooted. And uh, with that, there's also, of course, no big backing. 
in, in, in crisis like these. And so that's why we say, well, we are a community OM. We are based on a lot of people's shoulders. And uh, this is why we again go out there and say, if we can continue, then together with all these people who brought us that, that far. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, I just looked at Tesla's stock price today, $124 a share. It, just stupendously crazy stock price. I can't even believe it. Um, there's many companies out there that are hitting, you know, Rivian and so forth that are hitting really low stock prices. It makes no sense to me at all because we all know that EVs are, are here to stay. Um, and so it's hit you guys hard too. And so to be clear here, the Scion is an amazing car. Jesse and I got so excited about it when we heard about it because it's solar covered with solar panels. Um, and that's exciting to us. But what are you trying to do here? So basically, if you can get 3,500 people to put the full price down on the car, then you'll probably have enough money to continue. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, we have a exact funding plan on our website. We're being very transparent and you can look at it. Um, what we're saying is 3,500 Sions equals roughly 100 million euros um, in, in cross um, cash income. And that's enough um, with additional money from investors to reach um, pre-series production. We have a clear funding plan on our website laid out how much money we need, how much money we get through the campaign, and what is additional required. So we believe this campaign is a huge push also towards investors, because if we can tell investors, hey, there were just thousands of people putting down money for a car which comes in 12 to 18 months, and they prepaid 3,500 of them up front. This is the best sign we can give to investors. This is the proof that this car has a market. Okay, so to be clear, this will not only bring in some much needed cash, but it will also signal to other investors that they should put up some more cash to get you further along. Yes, Okay. exactly. And so you've got about 21,000 people signed up for the car, and you're basically saying to those people, hey, put up the money that you would have spent on the car. In fact, less than, right? Because you're giving them a discount. Am I right about that? Right. You're right. Basically, 21,000 people said they want to have the car. They put down some money. And we asked them now to prepay the money 12 to 18 months before they get the car. Actually, it's doable. It sounds doable, right? If you want to go and have a car, pay the car cash now, and you will get it in 12 to 18 months. Still, there's a risk to it. And we want to be clear about the risk and be honest and transparent and say, of course, there can happen something between now and shipment. So that's basically the only risk there we have. But besides that, there's a huge chance. There's a huge chance that we can prove investors and we can prove a whole industry that solar electric vehicles have in market, that they are needed and that we should bring them to the streets right now. So Yes, and it, one thing to add there, um, I mean, it happened before, right? Some, some, some people might remember we had a campaign in 2019 where it was back then also about, you know, are we continuing with the sign? And what happened there, yes, we were successful with the campaign. We, talk, we were talking about 50 million of payment commitments from that time. And then uh, what happened with these 50 million was it was not only these 50 million, and now we're here again because the 50 million are spent. No, it's actually with these 50 million, we went way further. So we went to the uh, NASDAQ uh, stock exchange. We collected 260 million via the uh, stock market. Uh, we actually even closed around just beginning of uh, December uh, with 30 million. So investors still believe in us. Yes, it's just much harder, right? right. It's just much, much harder at the moment. And I think that, that's important uh, to note here that it, it's, it's the moment where we say, well, these people out there, these 21,000, they see the potential in the car. A lot of people out there still not see it. Why? Because the concept itself of the sign is totally new. Solar integration, really like, really experiencing in your, your day to day commute will make a huge difference. Uh, bidirectional charging, if you really see the benefits and experience by yourself, if you have your house and you have a power, power bank on wheels, right, with the sign. All of that is so new that a lot of people think it's just a normal EV, but it's not. And so right. we, we see the potential underrated and the, the market being very difficult. And these two things combined bring us into the situation we're in. 
Okay, so I have a couple questions here. So first of all, if I'm not one of the 21,000 people who's pre-ordered um, the car, can I do that now and then also put in for the full amount? Oh, like ju- kind of jump, jump, okay. jump the list, so to speak. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. you can. And there's a there's a discount, a huge discount right now. We give uh, up to two thousand seven hundred euros out of thirty thousand euros, which is pretty good. Yep. Okay. So then let me ask this other question. So let's say that I give you all the money for my car. Um, what happens with that money? And then um, do I have to be worried about it? That, well, that, that, that's the point I raised. Yeah, one, one important thing for this campaign uh, especially is when you commit your money now, even full price, uh, you only have to pay if we are successful. That's very, very important for this campaign. So that means that um, all the money uh, that is committed in this campaign already, is we, we have no you know, access to it at the moment, only if we are successful. And uh, yeah, so that, that's one important thing for, for, for now. Okay, so if I order the car now, the money's being held in escrow, basically. You guys aren't going to be spending the money, and then, so only if you're successful does the well, what money is get successful? out. What does successful mean Right, now? the successful is the question, because, I mean, if I give you the money, I want a car. <laughs> um, you know, like, that's kind of, that's what I'm thinking, and I think that most people are thinking, okay, so I'm going to give you this money, um, but, like, everything seems to be up in the air. Why would I give you the money if I think that it's going to um, disappear and then I won't get the car? Yeah, so what does successful look like? This is the point. Um, you know, meant with that, within the 50 days, the money is not put in our bank account. But as soon as we hit the milestone, we will get the money and we will use the money in order to make it to production. So in a worst case scenario, your money is gone. But we have a clear funding strategy and we are very confident we will make it to production. Why? Because we made it already once. The last time we gave gave the the people the promise, we will raise 50 million and we will get further investments from investors. And we did so. We did over 260 million euros additionally raised after this last car training campaign. So the milestone I mentioned is the success of the campaign, not bringing the sun onto the sheet. Okay. Maybe that, that is, yes. Okay, so let me just talk through that. So basically there's, uh, someone can give you the money for the whole car, and I'm just breaking it down just so that way everyone kind of understands. I could give you the money, and the campaign could be unsuccessful, money comes back, right? Because it was being held in escrow. Correct. It's okay. not even taken. Uh, well, depending on the payment method, either it's taken but not used because it's kind of an, an escrow. Mm-hmm. We have no right. access to it at all. Or uh, it's not even paid. You commit it. It's like there's one cent transmitted just to check if the payment method is legit. But then you only have to pay if we are successful. Right. Okay. So, but yeah, basically, yes, like so that. Once, you get the money back or it's not even collected. So hopefully you hit the milestone of collecting um, enough reservations, basically, uh, or more than reservations, full price for the vehicle. But then you still have to bring the car into production. So after that point, if it's successful, you'll take access to the money and you'll start buying, you know, machines and stuff that you need to start building the the stuff. And so, you know, worst case scenario, um, let's say that there's, you know, some special machine that you need and it fell in the ocean and it's gone (laughs) now. And you're like, oh, no, that was a $40 million machine. Oh, no. Uh, Then there's a possibility that the car can't be produced or you'd need to raise that money back in order to continue to to produce the vehicle. And if you couldn't do that, no car, my money's gone. And I'm sad about that. Right. Yeah. Well, as Lauren said, in detail, you can see it all on the website, but just here to to, as a rough overview. So we have the campaign cross. It's uh, 105 million if we are successful. So net, we're talking about 85, uh, roughly 85 million. So 85 is then the first milestone of, of, of uh, funding, right? Then we have additional 50 million that we see very likely to collect then on the market with that strong sign of the campaign uh, and being so close uh, to, to the production. So 50 additional uh, uh, million. Then we are at pre-series and pre-series already means, as you know, there are already cars coming off the production line. It's just way slow, right? We, we, we are like building up the um, production line, testing out the production line, testing out what works, what, what does not work. So it's pre-series. It's not the final uh, one, but still, uh, we, we already have cars coming off our production line. And then we have the full volume SOP for which we need additionally 80 million. 
So we're talking about 130 additional money from the market or from even then our banks. And we see that as very likely. That is something where we feel confident after the strong sign of the campaign, collecting further uh, 130 million on the market is feasible. Of course, we cannot predict the future, uh, but we see that likely. The only thing then uh, is, of course, there's still money missing, right? So some of uh, your, your viewers might see it, you might see that. Of course, when we collect money now, of course, that money will be missing then uh, when we produce the cars because we buy the materials and we give off the cars. But that is like that kind of a cash flow that is already uh, where, where we have uh, talks with banks where we, where we say, this is, you know, this is just, um, you, we already reached then the point that is the most critical one, which is the production. And then we feel confident this is just, you know, um, cash flow. Uh, management and th that can that can then also be financed. So that was the rough overview how we see the strategy after the campaign. So why are these thirty five hundred um, cars so important? These uh, you know people coming forward with it is wh what does it signal to your investors? What are they so worried about? Why wouldn't they just give you the money now? You've gotten so far. So why what is what's so important about this magic number of thirty five hundred? Well, there's a simple answer: proof the market, proof the market of solar electric vehicles. We are confident and we know there is a market for solar electric vehicles, but investors might be skeptical. We have proven the market that we have a second angle, a B2B business, solar business, where we make already today revenues with. Uh, it's, it's very fast growing. We have over 20 free customers announced, including Mitsubishi, MAN, uh, Scania, big corporations uh, integrating now our solar technology. But they want to also see on the B2C side, on the solar car side, that the market is growing in, in there. But isn't that what pre-orders are for? Yes, it is. And we are confident. But nowadays, you know, EV companies tend to have pre-orders. Some are prepaid, some are not. Ours are prepaid with an average down payment before the campaign of 2,000 euros. But still, investors want to see more proof. And that's the campaign about it. So I'd like to talk about one of the things I've been saying lately about EV startups is that if you can't compete with Tesla, get out of the business, okay? Because it's been established that Tesla is your competitor, right. no question anymore. In the beginning, you might have argued that they'll go bankrupt or whatever, but there's no question or that now. It was still a big, wide open field. Right. I, I mean, we were reporting on it back in 2016. It felt like anything that had a battery and a motor and could drive was something that people right. were going to want to be interested in. Now we're finding out, well, I want, I want fast charging. I right. want su uh, service centers. I want all sorts of fun stuff. So it seems to me, though, that you actually have two things that Tesla doesn't. You've got solar on your cars and you have uh, v to G or you know, bi-directional charging. These are two things, at, at least two things that Tesla doesn't have. Tell me why that would be so important to me as a customer when I get all these other great things I get from buying a Tesla. Two things. I start with solar and maybe you with bi-directional charging. Um, solar means convenience. Think about all those people not owning their home, not having a garage, not having a wall box at home. Where do they charge their vehicle? Think about commuters who are driving short distance every day to work and back home. And that's why they have a car. What if I would tell you, I would build in a combustion engine vehicle, which comes with the promise of roughly 6,000 miles per year in LA, free on gas, 6,000 miles every single year. That would be a good selling combustion engine vehicle, wouldn't it be? And this is exactly what solar electric vehicles are about. The Sion in, in LA recharges itself 6,000 miles on average for free from the sun. This is convenience. This is for free. This is uh, pure, clean energy right into your battery. Yes. One feature. Next feature, bidirectional charging. So what do we see here? Simple described, it's a power bank on wheels. So what you got, you have 54 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, and you can use that basically for everything. So vehicle to load, meaning you can plug in any household device or whatever it is on a construction site, whatever you can think of. And a lot of our electric vehicles have that already. So it's not that new, right? But here comes the next thing. So we have 11 kilowatt 
AC uh, bidirectional, bidirectional charging. So that means that you can you know, power up your house or give power back to the grid in a, in a larger quantity. Well, and I want to stop you right there because, I mean, we've seen this from Ford, right? Ford just came out with this and you have to buy the special Ford charger and then you think oh we're, we're done like zach and i got the ford f-150 lightning and we were gonna we got the lariat so we got the special wall box and we thought we were all set nope turns out you have to spend another four grand to buy an inverter with a sun run thing and they have to install plus it for an electrician you, and plus an electrician and then it's going to be kind of wired into your house but then you need all sorts of all sorts of other electrical stuff so I mean, is that really what everyone wants? Yeah. I mean, this th is the point. This is the point. Th that's why we integrate. I mean, you got to see uh, a lot of uh, OEMs out there claim they have bidirectional charging integrated. But the truth is what they simply did, they have DC bidirectional charging. So you can charge that car with DC uh, and you can give power back, but it's DC. And you always need to convert that DC power into AC power to use it for you know, your, your, your house. And that is expensive, as you say, four grants. And you know, there's, it's going to be very hard to find something cheaper out there. And uh, well, we do it. A we we use a completely other path, and that is integrating AC bidirectional charging. And that means the power that comes out of the sign is already converted for your house. You you of course you still need a uh, wall, box. wall box, and in that case, a bidirectional charging wall box that makes sure you know the flows are going right. Um, but you don't need to convert it and spend four grants on it. So that's a huge difference and a huge money saver there. I feel like you guys have the same problem now that we've been having for years trying to do butts in seats, right? We're trying to convince people on a video show how great EVs are. And the only thing we've actually found that works is to get them in the EV itself. Once they're in it, they go, oh, I get it. But you guys have a car that's the same thing. You need them to pr pretty much buy this vehicle, plug it into their home, go for a weeks and, and weeks have of it driving. All work before I can fully understand it. Because we're sitting here and we're talking about AC and DC. And most people, I'm sorry, most people don't deal with AC or DC. Or right. they, they do, but they don't know that they're dealing with right. it. And so you're saying, I can plug it in and I need a wall box. But and, they're also saying you I'm, can drive this car without having to worry about plug it in. And most people aren't thinking that yet. Right. And so to me, this is like your challenge, yeah. which is to convey this point where I can sit down. I, an intellectual, right, can sit down and think <laughs> think through this idea and this concept. But most of the time, people really, mm. I mean, why did HDTVs get adopted? Was it because everyone said, well, I I hear that it will have More 1080p <laughs> resolution. And I know what 1080p means, of course. No, they went to their friend's house and they were watching the basketball game and they can, and they said, oh, my gosh. That looks great. I can see his pores. Right. I need this thing. <laughs> It was never the, the point of like, it's better. And you advertise it on the television to show a better television. That doesn't work, right? You can't, it's so hard for people to understand what you're trying to convey. Well, and I was so excited because you have 21,000 people who get it and who signed up for the car. So I thought, okay, they're all set. They got enough people who get it. And once those people start getting their cars, more people will get it. But that's why I've been so bummed to hear that like, we're kind of stuck on this point because yeah, I wish I could talk to your investors and say, look, these guys actually have something that Tesla doesn't have. They're actually a competitor to Tesla. And you have something that Ford doesn't have. And you have something that a lot of these companies don't have. Because like you're saying, they do DC bidirectional charging, which of course sounds great. Um, but then, as we've been talking about, when when the actual uh, you know rubber meets the road and you you decide, okay, well, I want to do that. And it and all of a sudden you're like four thousand dollars to I I paid eighty thousand no. dollars for that truck. Well, and I want to talk about the Aptera. One of the reasons we're so excited about Aptera is that they're putting solar on their vehicles. It's a very efficient vehicle. But I got to be honest, an Aptera is for a certain person who likes the look of that three wheeled vehicle, and I like it. But most people, I think, would really relate better to the Scion, which is a four wheel standard looking car, which is what everyone's kind of used to. So I feel like you guys have a better shot at this because. Other than it having solar on it, which you practically can't even tell, mm -hmm. it's like a regular car. And so I, I want to talk about the bi-directional charging a little bit more because I think that it really is interesting. But until 
people who need to know the details have all the details, it's it's going to be a little bit nebulous for them. It's going to be a little bit confusing. So we talked a little bit before how the Ford works, where you have to have this four thousand dollar inverter set up, and and uh, Sunrun has to come out to your house and install it. Um, let's talk about how your system would work with the AC charging, uh, bi-directional charging directly from the car. So in the car somewhere, it's converting the DC that it's getting from its battery pack into AC up to 11 point what kilowatts? 11 point zero, yes. Okay, so 11 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts of AC power that it and can And by the way, that's feed. a lot. I just, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's that's yes, a yes. good amount of electricity, right. um, which I think is, is really cool. Um, I don't want to get too. This is this is a hard balance. How how detailed do we get? Do we talk about three phase? Do we talk about that kind of stuff? But let's let's talk about it in terms of okay. You have that, and now I have a wall box that I install in my house. How is the wall box connected to uh, your panel? The, my panel, the rest of the house. Do I need something that can disconnect me from the grid? Does that need to talk to the wall box, or does it talk to the car, or do I not need that at all? So a couple of, a couple of things, and that, now it gets a little bit detailed. Okay. Yeah. So we're using um, the ISO standard 15118, which is very hard. And, and we think we are the first ones who integrate um, the standard. That's the first one. The second one is then it goes through your DCU, which is our distribution and charging unit in the car. It gets converted into 11 kilowatt AC um, out of the car into your wall box. And this wall box is, um, you know, it will cost like a normal regular wall box it it's not like a fortune not several thousand euros it's it's something in the in, in, in the you know very low four digits and then you need an hems and home energy management system which you basically have in your home when you have a solar installed on your roof and an app which is showing you something. Or a battery pack. Or a battery pack. You, and you already have today a HAMS integrated in, in your home. If you have that, you need to connect it and you're good to go. There's still a legal thing to it, depending on where you live, because some countries regulate it, some country don't or doesn't. So it's depending on regulation also. But if you're off grid, it works right away. So vehicle to home is the easy thing. Vehicle to grid is the difficult thing because then you need to comply with all the regulations. Uh, in Germany, you have 50 hertz. And, you know, it's, it's, it's different in every single country. Can we talk about a fun thing, though? You could, it sounds like, charge up, like I have a Sondor's uh, Metacycle. If you had an electric motorcycle, for instance, could I charge it from your car? Yes. Sure. Yes. We yeah. just charged a Tesla. Uh, there's a video released just last week where we charged a Tesla with 8 kilowatt AC. And we couldn't do that with the Rivian or the Ford. We right. couldn't charge no. off of it. You need like a neutral ground plug. And it's... and. Uh, how does ground work when you're charging between two vehicles? If you do vehicle to vehicle, you need to simulate a wall box in between. Otherwise, it would not work. Otherwise, a Tesla would immediately stop because they don't have the communication. So you use the two pins of the type two plot plug. In Germany, you have in Europe, you have the type two plug. In, in US, you have level one, I think. And you use the two pins of communication in order to simulate a wall box, and then you can charge in another electric vehicle. That's okay. cool. I just think that these are some uses that people aren't even considering yet, but um, because they don't, again, kind of like an EV, until you drive one, you don't really understand all the questions you need to ask or need to know. But here's one I get from a, a, from a lot of people, which is you keep talking about LA, LA is super sunny, it's awesome, but we don't, we don't live in LA. Mm -hmm. And uh, what if you're in a less sunny part of the world? Well, the, the good thing is, as soon as you're in the US, you're always more sunny than, than Germany. So here are some stats. It's, it's roughly 3,600 um, miles in Munich, Germany. It's the worst, the best condition in Germany. But in the US, the worst condition are 4,000 miles in Detroit. In New York, it's already 5,000 miles. In San Francisco, it's 5,700. 5, in LA, it's 6,000 miles. So, so I want to just 
kind of translate this for people. Let's say you live in New York, folks, and one of your big hangups for buying an EV is where am I going to charge it? Because I live in a brownstone in, you know, the whatever. Uh, this car probably can get you all around New York all the time without having to even worry about that. And I think that's the problem. We're talking to people who aren't EV drivers yet, so they're just full of apprehension and problems. And worry. Um, but what you guys are actually doing is answering some huge things that people don't even know are huge things yet. 100%. This is... We've been in the US uh, with the car just recently and we showed the car to people and they were blown away. They were like, wow, this is bigger than I thought. Wow, the solar integration is more sleek than I thought. And then the third one is the solar piece, the solar angle, this is really blowing my mind. Because they were like thinking about like, what's my driving distance? And they said, for me, this is an you know, all, all free year mileage, uh, year round car. This is like, this is incredible. There's, there's also a video out there. If you want to check it out, uh, we have a live video, how, you know, how the solar system performs when we were on tour. I don't know, which stop was it? Was it New York still? Uh, no, the, uh, different ones. Yeah. In New York, we had a video in San Francisco. We yeah. had a video in, in LA. We had a video. You, you see it on our social media channels. And that's, that's so cool because you can actually check out like, you know, from which direction the sun comes, how, how much power is generated on which panel. And, uh, yeah. So, so you see it live in the car, uh, how much you're producing at the very second you're looking at it. There's kind of two things. Is this car as cool as everyone thinks and can they actually make it? So I want to flip now to the making it part. Let's say that everything works out great. Your campaign goes awesome. Isn't it still really hard to make a car mass produce it at the right cost? It is. It is definitely. Um, but what we do is going exactly the different strategy everyone else does. We're not building our own production. We are not having too many equipment levels. We only produce one variant. Um, well, you can have this color. You can have this car in any color as you like, as long as it's black. So we do a couple of things different. We're not going to steel stamping tools. We're going to aluminum space frame um, and a polymer outer skin made of, you know, solar. And then we do online direct sales, no dealerships, no showrooms. And through those five strategies I just mentioned, we can be so affordable. That is, that is the key. Because we outsource in production, and, and not, not only not only affordable, but as you say, like you know, reducing lot, re we are reducing a lot of risks for right. for the production setup. I mean, Valmet is a great partner. They produce for for Daimler also for Mercedes Benz. Uh, they they produce for a lot of other uh, OEMs out there, and we're already working with them since now one and a half years, and it's a great partnership because they have all right. the experience. We can focus on the engineering part. They focus on the manufacturing part. We actually, we have right now uh, 18 of our ser serious validation vehicles, right? The, the ones you might have seen uh, on, on our pictures. And two of them are already built up by Valmet. So w while we're talking, we are already like, you know, directly in the process of building up the manufacturing line, planning the manufacturing line, and they collecting experience how to build our car. Okay, so this sounds a lot like Fisker, who's using Magna to build their vehicle, which I got to be honest, when I heard that, I was like, oh, phew, we're not trying to build a factory like you guys are saying. Because a lot of companies, you know, like Lucid, uh, get stuck when they're trying to build out the factory, it ends up costing more. So it does sound like now that you're using a partner that actually makes cars, that's a lot less risky for, for me, the investor. But I guess I'm talking now to the American viewers, or I want you to talk to them. Um, this sounds like it's a European car, at least for now. Um, is it? Is there any way as, a, as an American that I could put some money down and get one of these shipped over here? Not yet. We, we have plans for the US, yes. But as of today, you cannot order it on the website. Um, but hopefully very soon you will be. Are we talking of these 3,500 people that you need? Could they be Americans? Unfortunately, not. No. I mean, that, that's actually our, our struggle also right now because we are on the US, on the NASDAQ listed. Um, but the, the tricky part is why, why is that, uh, is we, our, our first market is Europe, right? So we also get the homologation for Europe and so forth. We plan to go to the S2, but 
as long as we cannot give an exact date on where we will go there, we cannot collect our reservations there. So that's why, I mean, we, on the tour, right, we had so many people passing by. I mean, even right. one guy cried and he said, like, this is his wish since he was a child. And so we have all these stories there and we know that people want the car also there. It's simply that we have to give an exact date. And as you might also know, in the process of developing a car, when you develop it for one market, for Europe, there are other standards for the US market. So it's not that easy to simply ship it there. We also have to do some re-engineering. Not that much, but we have to do it. And that's why, you know, we are very conservative there and first say, okay, we enter Europe and then uh, look into the US. That's tough. That's tricky for you guys because, I mean, you know, the US is a huge market. And I feel like because we do get a lot of sun here, um, that would be like... <laughs> We're we're so much further south. It's the funniest thing. If you've ever really looked at a map and you you look at Europe and you draw the line across and you're like Quebec, you're like wow. I thought we were. You have to get down to Spain before you even start to see you know Maine, and you're right. like what? How is that possible? I feel like what we need here is we need to show people. Um, who haven't heard about you guys. Like, yes, you have a great group of people who are following you closely, but we need to get the word out to the next level yeah. um, during this campaign. And that's, I guess, what I want to tell people watching today is if you believe in what these guys are doing, share this video, share their website, let people know who might not have heard of them before, mm -hmm. um, because this is a pretty exciting car. It's excited Jesse and I for years. And I want to bring up one final negative thing, stupidly, because I just thought of it. Um, <laughs> So let me ask you this, if I if I really want to put my money down on the car, but I don't have the money, I can't like take <laughs> out an auto loan on not a car, because usually the way that the loan would work would be that at the worst case, the bank takes the car back and they sell it. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get so, an so auto loan. No. It has to be someone who has the the cash. Yeah, we, we also being clear here, please only give us money if you really have it, right? Simply yes, that. Your own advisors, I thought, I saw a video that said uh, they were telling you to, you know, fire 70% of your staff and just stick to what you've been mm. making money on, which is your, you know, business to business. Um, can you tell us about that part a little bit more? You just mentioned that you have a lot of partners. What are you actually doing with those partners? So we have built up our company on two pillars, the solar business and the car business. The car business was how we originally started, right? In the garage 10 years ago, just the two of us building the first prototype by hand. The solar business started later when we realized with the car, that solar technology we developed for the car is so unique, we should market this to B2B, B2B customers. That was like two years ago or something. Yes. Two and a half years ago. That was when, when we d dove into it and we were like, wait, this has more potential because solar integration is right. one piece, the other is the electrical piece, like feeding all, you know, the different inputs from the uh, solar panels into the battery is also a new device we had to develop. And all of that were for us like, okay, wait, nobody has that out, uh, out there. So what if we put that on other vehicles? And that turned out to be a very unique business, which grew over the last two years, very fast, attractive very, very big customers. I mean, 23 by now. And there are big names like Google, like MIN right. is one of them, a uh, subsidy of uh, Volkswagen. And like, really, we're we talking about, you know, not peanuts. We're talking about great potential. And there, there are two different kinds we do with uh, on, on the solar side. So one thing is we have our so-called solar basket. And what that means is you have uh, similar types of buses driving around here in Europe. And we have a kit for that, which involves everything you need uh, for the integration. So solar panels, uh, as I said, that device, that electric device and everything else. And the bus comes in and we can, you know, uh, retrofit it. It's one, two days, and then it goes out again and has solar on its roof. So that's like the one part. And it's great because we can do all already today, we can do something and retrofit even diesel buses with it. So they have less consumption because all uh, electric uh, devices on, on the bus are then powered by, by the sun. And uh, the other business, however, is of course the one that is, you know, for the future, much more interesting. We talk about serious integration. So we have then uh, whatever it is, um, trailer manufacturers, truck manufacturers, uh, train manufacturers, who will then integrate our technology for their uh, serious vehicles. And of course, there's a huge amount of potential for, for revenue and, and uh, just you know, vehicles 
that can be uh, equipped with our technology there. Well, and that's why it's actually coming back to your point. So that's why a lot of people tell us, well, it's so good. That business is so good. Why, why you keep doing that car? You know, it, it only, you know, it's a weight on, on, your, on your shoulders. Why are you keep doing it? But of course, we still see potential there because we need both sides, you know, these buses and trucks, but also a, a kind of, you know, solar revolution uh, for our cars. That's why you fight on both ends. And now I used to think it was just easy to do solar. You just slap some panels on something, you're good to go. But <laughs> Put a couple wires around. Right, but we've been doing, done, yeah. you know, some projects lately and we realized that it's so complicated because if one panel's getting more power than the other, you've got to balance it. And so is this, like, is it more complicated than I think it is? Yes, this is our uh, unique technology in the car. We call it MCU, MPPT Central Unit. This is the heart of solar because you have always different angles to the sun, different shapes, different shades, and it needs to be very efficient. And that's our core technology on the electrical side. And then on the solar integration side is how you integrate a cell into a body panel. Wow, thank you guys for hanging out with us today and telling us you know, how you're doing. And by the way, how are you doing uh, towards the 3,500 goal? Where are we today? Uh, we are close to the thousand. So we are good on track. Wow. It's amazing. A thousand people already said, like, it, more than that. It's, it's, I think it's already a couple of thousand people who come, you know, contributed. Yeah, it's over six thousand people who participated in the right. campaign. But the amounts of, you know, full paid uh, sign reservations is now close to one. That's great. So if people are interested, where should they go right now to find out more information? Go on our on website. On our website, zonomotors.com. You will find everything on there. Wow. You Thank will you. find also a lot of trans transparency. Uh, you know, you will see serious toolings. You will see a finance plan. You will see how we're doing on the solar side, how we're doing on the, you know, um, um, the HR side and all that. So we're trying to be very transparent with that campaign. Well, hopefully in the new year, we'll see a new hashtag. It'll be we win or we won. Uh, I'm hoping that's what we're going to see. But yeah, if you're watching this now and you, you want to be a part of this, go to their website, find out more and hopefully join this campaign because that's the only way people that we're going to move this forward is if we do this and hey, Tesla started small too. So this could be it. This could be the next big thing. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Well, thank thanks you so for having, having us. us.